Don't forget that you can now follow us on Facebook and Twitter for live updates of all our upcoming videos. So why Go? Go is simply put one of the most modern languages and it's one of the latest, so my answer to that is why not? And in respect to that, what is the purpose of Go in most cases if I've already got things like PowerShell? Well, the answer is actually pretty simple. PowerShell is kind of driven at the OS level and lets you go from one OS to another where PowerShell is present, but it doesn't really allow you to exchange information very easily. And therefore, it lacks the necessary ability to go into the what we refer to as API space, while Go inhabits majority of the API space. So that's what we're going to look at. So one of the things that I'd like to start with is probably the most important one that you're likely to use. Um, when we've looked at Docker containers and various other bits, we talk about having environment variables or keys in places where they're safe. So whenever you're creating a package, particularly in something like Go, it's good to have important values like passwords or safe keys stored outside of the code so that if you need to upload them for any reason, they're not known to everybody. And this becomes in particularly useful in things like Git repositories. So here I'm just going to show you a quick example of using the Funct and OS. So we'll do a first one with using the Funct. So that's a simple enough one. We're going to do a hello world. And just to prove that Go is installed on our system and that it's running normally and that everything compiles okay. So I'm just going to call this hello world. There's actually an already an example here. So I'm just going to overwrite that and then run my hello world. And one of the things I like about Go is that you can run it without needing to compile it. So I'm just going to do the Go run and you see the output is hello world. And this personally I find brilliant because if I've made a typo or something I can find out very quickly rather than needing to compile it then come back to it realizing there's a mistake, find the mistake, correct it. It's just so much faster and easier to do it in Go. So anyway, we're going to add on now the OS part because we now want to interact with the OS. So I'm going to add on another print statement, but in this case, instead of hard coding the print bit, one of the things I'm going to use is the os.getenv, so get environment, and then I'm going to tell it the variable that I'm looking for. So in this case, I'm looking for the um, non-existent um, password variable. I say non-existent because I know it's not on my machine at present. So putting that in there, saving it, and then running it again just to confirm that everything works normally. So what we should now see is a my password is followed by basically empty because there is no password currently in the system. So to set that, I'm going to use the set x, which is basically create a new variable. I'm going to use the password because that's the variable we're looking for and then I can put whatever I want as that variable. So it's a simple two string. So my super strong password. Um, now that that's created, I run it again. Now the important thing to remember here is that environment variables only exist as new shells are started up. So I'm going to actually open a command prompt and run basically the same code again. But since it's now a new command prompt, it will open up with that new environment. And then that environment, uh, the variable that we specified for password already exists. That's a very important thing to keep in mind. So we're going to go ahead and run it. And what you should see now is that we have the output also for the password. That's the behavior that is expected and something that you need to be mindful of when using these. So let's move on to the next part. What if we wanted to create a variable? So there is some more behavior that you need to be aware of. So we're now going to use a similar scenario to our previous one, but instead of getting an environment variable, we're going to go create an environment variable. So I'm going to use the uh, dot OS set environment and then I'm just going to go ahead and say my go and then I'm going to give it an environment variable of uh, go get something um, or you get the idea basically some silly sentence now the, the point here is um, we're going to save that and run it and then I'm just going to show you so you, what you're expecting here 
is that it's going to create an environment variable. Now, don't worry about the missing password. It's just that I've deleted that environment variable in between our videos here. Um, but you saw that the code ran okay. So we're just going to go ahead. We're going to go quickly look, and we're going to check our environment variables. And if we look through, we're going to see that there is no my go in the user profile, and there's no my go anywhere in the system profile. So did it work? would probably be the first question and maybe some of you are being going ah but you didn't run it under admin or other things um well that's actually kind of not how this works uh, and that's a very important thing to keep in mind this one actually is running kind of directly in the memory space and to prove my point uh if we go ahead and just print the output of that environment variable so in this case we just do a uh, print lane get uh environment oh, sorry dot os uh, sorry os dot get environment and then do the my go so we'll just print the output of the variable above and then run it um, what we will see there is the environment variable that we created but you see it's not being put into the os directly it's being put into the memory space where the program is running so when we run you see we now have the something goes on exactly as specified above. So this is a behavior that you need to be aware of and think about when creating programs. Now hopefully you liked this video. If you did, you know what to do. If you didn't, you probably also know what to do. And as always, see you in the next one.